uh, several years now. Uh, my first experience was receiving uh, at the Heritage Foundation an announcement of the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms event in about 2004, and I thought, I have to hang out with these people. <laughs> so, I have not been disappointed in my many interactions with the Independence Institute since then, and I'm, once again, I'm not uh, disappointed because I get to take home a martini glass. So, um, one of the, the, the cooler conservative think tanks one can hang out with, which I know is probably a low bar, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, really, I, I do love being out here, and I love a chance to come to Colorado whenever I can, especially hang out with Colorado women who are um, stylish, often conservative, and uh, whose great jewelry often matches their firearms. <laughs> so that is something that I value. Um, it just makes you, like, first-class citizens. Um, it's also fun to get to talk to people every time I speak now, because every time I speak, there's a new and better poll for conservatives that I can cite. Sorry, um, the people in the back need to hear. It. Okay, there you go. Like this? Is that good? Is that better? Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, every time I speak now, there's a new and better poll for conservatives that I can cite when I get here, uh, which is exciting for me because things are getting better every day. Which back in 2008 did not seem possible at all. Uh, so I, I relish that every time I come to see you guys. And I'm gonna tell you about a poll in a second. First of all, I will address what I'm sure everybody has heard about this morning. Um, my s frequent sparring partner on Fox News, uh, on the O'Reilly Factor, Juan Williams, was fired by the very tolerant uh, <laughs> folks at NPR today, or late last night. Um, because of some comments that he made on Monday on the O'Reilly Factor, we were discussing O'Reilly's dust up with the View ladies, another group of tolerant and accepting liberals, <laughs> who when confronted with uh, uh, Bill's very controversial comment that the people who attacked us on 9-11 were actually Muslim, uh, decided to walk off the set. This led to uh, Bill being very excited because I'm sure his ratings were awesome on Monday. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joy and Whoopi. Uh, Juan and I came on the show to talk about the incident, and Juan said, in discussing this, he first said, you know, it's important to make the distinction, as both of us did, we said, Bill, we think it's very important to make the distinction between moderate and extremist Muslims because, and I noted, if you're somebody who believes in our mission in Iraq or Afghanistan, you have to believe that there's a distinction and that there are folks who will work with the West and who will work with us to, to create functioning moderate Muslim societies to push back on the extremists. Now those Muslims often are not able to stand up or don't stand up often enough because they face the threat of being you know, blown up by their co-religionists, which is something luckily we don't face. Um, but we're having this discussion and Juan says very honestly as in his human observation that he, uh, you know, we can't ignore the fact that people who perpetrate these acts are perpetrating them in the name of Islam. That's what they say, they make it very clear. And he said that in going to airports when he's in, you know, the, the Islamist extremist uh, weapon of choice, which is a giant plane, uh, and he sees somebody who is maybe in traditional Muslim garb, has a prayer rug, is, you know, very openly devout and obviously devout, that this makes him nervous sometimes on an airplane. I don't. I didn't think at the time this was terribly controversial, although I think the folks at NPR would, you know, frown upon it. Uh, so he was fired for, for saying that. Um, <laughs> he still has a job at Fox News, and I would like to point out that Juan is, a, Juan is just a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, he's always been so kind to me. He's one of the most generous, genuine people you will meet in D.C., and there aren't that many of them sometimes in D.C., and he'll always help you out. He's just a wonderful guy, whether he agrees with you or not. He's just, he, he's on your side if you're his friend. Uh, so he's just a fabulous guy, and I would like to point out that as a centrist, who is certainly to the left of a lot of folks at Fox News and to the right of a lot of folks at NPR, where does he still have a job? the tolerant folks at Fox News have decided to keep him in the midst, whereas the folks at NPR have thrown him overboard. Um, it was, I just think it reflects very badly on NPR and not badly on Juan. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, I thought you guys would enjoy.
I haven't talked to him today, but he has, um, he has, I have passed along my, uh, my well wishes to him, along with uh, the, the good wishes of many, 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 many conservatives who do not agree with him on many issues, but who support him and think that, you know, he shouldn't be fired for saying something fairly honest and, you know, not controversial on TV. So, that's one. I will pass along your good wishes to him as well, if, if that's okay. <laughs> I know he's glad to have support. Um, but moving on. So, fun year, right? Um, I, when I explain to people um, who are not into politics and who are not ideological, people like me, <laughs> I concede that we are strange. Uh, and. I've finally stumbled upon, I think, a metaphor that works. We're like really, really, really intense soap opera fans. <laughs> like people who have watched Days of Our Lives every day for the past 25, 30 years and are convinced that something brand new and exciting is happening every day. <laughs> when really there's just like, you know, a camera pans and someone makes a face for five or ten seconds. <laughs> dun dun dun! Then we cut to commercial. Um, we're those people when it comes to politics. Uh, and the rest of the country is convinced while going around about their normal business and trying to raise their families that the wheels are always spinning but nothing's really happening. Right? And it's our job to convince them, no, something really important is going on today, this Wednesday on Days of Our Lives, uh, that you really, really have to tune in for. Right? And they only sort of tune in maybe once every four years, once every two years, and are not convinced by our passion that something's really happening. Um, unfortunately, unlike soap operas, something really is happening. Uh, and things on a national level can change in a heartbeat. Uh, things can slip through the Senate, and as a bill did in the last two weeks before anybody notice, uh, notices, uh, that can drastically change how people do business, how people are able to raise their families and feed their kids. Uh, and luckily, during these past two years, we soap opera fans have been able to convert a whole new segment of the population into freaky Days of Our Lives fans with us. <laughs> this is an important development because we were so passionate about saying this healthcare process is going badly, he's trying to push something on us that we don't want. He wanted to do that fast. Barack Obama wanted to do this fast so no one noticed how ugly it was how he was not taking care of business as usual in Washington and fixing things. Um, and so that no one noticed all the deals that were going on, all the stuff that always goes on in Washington. I do not claim that this was all clean before Barack Obama got there at all. In fact, it was just as bad in many cases. But now the American people know how bad it is. Beyond the populist rhetoric, beyond the nonsense that you hear from candidates like, I'm going to go and clean up. You know, there's actually a new realization. When I moved to Washington uh, six years ago, and I would tell people that uh, Congress people do not read the bills, they did not believe me. They did not believe me until this year with health care, and it finally sunk in that at the bare minimum that we would wish that they could do for us, they're not doing. And the argument from people who, are, who live in D.C. and who've been there for a long time is always, well, there's so many things that we pass, we couldn't possibly read all of them. And a normal person says, well, maybe you should be passing less. 